So in terms of APIs, like I said, the very first version of .NET Standard defined only a small subset of APIs. So that was very small, but on the plus side, if you had a class library supporting .NET Standard 1.0, you were able to use it pretty much everywhere you wanted, even in Windows Phone 8.0 or in Windows 8.0, not even 8.1 or not even 10, right? So basically, a class library which supports .NET Standard 1.0 can be used pretty much everywhere. So that's cool. But of course, you have only a few APIs at your disposal. So at some point, you hit a wall and maybe you have to upgrade and maybe you have to say, okay, my class library, actually, I can't go with 1.0. It's too small. Let's go with 1.6, for example, or something. So you have more APIs. But then suddenly, you see some frameworks don't support that anymore. What does it mean concretely? It means if you have, for example, a .NET, like a WPF application running in enterprise, okay, and you say, oh, I have this uh, cool library that I want to use, but it's developed using .NET Standard 1.6. Well, if your PC has .NET Framework 4.5 installed, it's not going to run. You need to upgrade your PC to 4.6, and that could be an issue in enterprise especially, okay, because as you know, if you want to upgrade to .NET uh, 4.6, you have to upgrade the whole PC and maybe the whole fleet of PCs. So that could be an issue. Okay. Same thing with .NET Standard 2.0. Now we have something like 20,000 new APIs, so it's huge. Okay. But of course, we, .NET Standard 2.0 supports even less frameworks, so you might have an issue. Like for example, if you had an old ASP.NET Core 1.0 application running on the web, running on Linux, that's cool. But if suddenly you decide, oh, I have this class library, which is 2.0 that I want to use, then you have to upgrade your ASP.NET application to 2.0 as well, like it shows on the first line, which might be an issue, okay? So there is this difference between the application number, what do they support, and the class library if you want. So if I summarize, and this is a small view of a huge table, which is at this address, don't be scared. Basically, what this table tells you as a rule of thumb is that if you develop an application try to go as high as possible. Like for example, if I develop a .NET Core application, if I can, it would be good if I can use .NET Core 2.0, because then I can use a class library developed with .NET Standard 2.0, 1.6, 1.5, 1.4, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the way. Okay? If I have uh, a .NET Framework application, like a WPF application, if I can use 4.6.1, then I'm good. I can support all the .NET Standard versions. On the other hand, if you're a class library developer, then you should try to shoot for the lowest possible version, okay? Because you will have less APIs at your disposal for your class library, but then your class library can be used everywhere without having to worry about upgrading the application framework. Does that make sense? Okay, I know that's tricky, those version things, but basically, you know, that's kind of the rule of thumb, okay? Class libraries try to shoot as low as possible. 